you don't give birth anymore. You customize, no contractions, no pain, no, do you want a boy or a girl, whispered in a trembling voice. Now you open an app, tap create embryo, and choose eyes, gray-green, intelligence, above average, risk of diabetes, zero, facial features, symmetrical with a sharpened jawline. Your future child's DNA enters a digital editing queue, and the embryo goes not into a womb, but into a capsule, watched over by an AI obstetrician. Every metric streamed live into your phone. Welcome to Reproduction 2.0, where motherhood isn't a gift, it's an interface. Where childbirth isn't physiology, it's a startup. What we're talking about here isn't traditional pregnancy. This is IVF, in vitro fertilization when sperm and egg don't meet inside you but inside a lab dish, when a baby doesn't begin with a kiss but with a clinic, a tablet, and a scanner. The shift already happened decades ago. In 1978, the first IVF child, Louise Brown, was born. The world was shocked. Religious leaders panicked. Newspapers screamed about Frankenstein children. Yet society adapted. Today, more than 10 million people have been born thanks to IVF worldwide. It's normalized. Routine. Insurance covers it. Celebrities brag about it. But that's just stage one. The future isn't only about conceiving outside the body. It's about gestating outside the body. Sounds like sci-fi? Not anymore. In 2017, researchers at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia pulled off a breakthrough. They placed a premature lamb inside a biobag, a transparent, sealed pouch filled with synthetic amniotic fluid. The fetus was connected to an artificial umbilical cord that pumped oxygen and nutrients. And then, it developed, for four weeks, outside any womb. The scientific term, ectogenesis, external gestation, not theory, a working prototype. Scientists admit the next milestone, human embryos. At early stages, after IVF, why? To reduce miscarriages, to prevent abnormalities, to make pregnancy itself optional. Imagine. No morning sickness, no swollen ankles, no risk of maternal death. Just a monitored capsule, data streamed into the cloud. Welcome to the world where you don't pick a baby's name. You pick their polygenic risk score. A U.S. startup called Genomic Prediction already offers embryo analysis for dozens of traits. Risk of diabetes, cancer predisposition, learning, IQ range, emotional stability, even tendency toward addiction. The mechanism is called the polygenic risk score, PRS. Each embryo gets a score predicting likelihoods of traits from intelligence to disease. This is not a future scenario. It has been available on the U.S. market since 2019. Controversial? Absolutely. Illegal? Not really. And demand is growing. Parents used to rely on instinct. Now they rely on algorithms. You don't hope for the best. You filter risk like sorting Netflix recommendations. What if an embryo isn't just biology, but data? It's digitized. DNA fully sequenced, stored in a clinic's database, doctors, or AI systems, sort and tag it. Parents scroll through profiles, swipe right on potential life. This is no longer natural selection. This is UX design. Only instead of designing a website, you're designing a human. The embryo becomes an interface object, customizable, configurable, shareable. In the 2020s, the startup Baby Glimpse rolled out something new. Facial prediction. Using the DNA of both parents, it generates a 3D rendering of the future child's face, not a blurry ultrasound photo, a lifelike portrait, powered by deep learning algorithms trained on thousands of DNA face matches. Fact check. Since 2018, both the FBI and Chinese police tested genetic facial reconstruction to create suspect sketches. Now the same tech is in consumer apps, not for crime, for customization. When the UK and US approved CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing for blood disorders in the 2020s, it marked a new era. Genome editing left the lab and entered medicine. But medicine is the gateway drug. Other nations, China, South Korea, Israel, are already experimenting with enhancing embryos, cutting out risky genes, boosting beneficial mutations, tweaking learning potential, even adjusting temperament. Add to this the creation of artificial egg cells from skin, achieved in mice in Japan, and the circle is complete. You don't even need to be born with eggs. Science will create them, fertilize them, edit them, implant them into a capsule. Children become code projects, debugged, patched, optimized. Think NFTS are just pixelated monkeys in hats. Wrong level. In 2022, startup LifeDAO suggested 
Each genome should be minted as an NFT, unique, immutable, blockchain verified. Why? Because you can't alter a blockchain record retroactively, because insurance companies could use it as proof of authenticity, because upgrades become traceable. One genome equals one token equals one child. Your baby's genome becomes a digital asset. Parents could license rare genes. Clinics could sell premium edits. Biotech companies could trade upgrades like Wall Street trade stocks. It sounds like cyberpunk, but it's already being pitched in investor decks. It's naive to think this is just parental choice. If embryos are data, then whoever controls the platform controls reproduction. And here's who's circling already. Google DeepMind building AI that sequences genomes and predicts embryo health. Meta, investing in neural interfaces that might read fetal signals. Elon Musk's Neuralink, testing chips that could one day be implanted in newborns. Startups like Orchid, Myome, and Genomic Prediction, offering subscriptions for genetic optimization. Parents might choose, but only from menus written by corporations. Once babies are assembled instead of born, every question becomes an ethical landmine. What happens to rejected embryos? Can you edit genes linked to emotions? Who's responsible if a perfect baby grows up unstable? Can parents re-edit a child midlife? Ethics lags behind technology. Always. Fact check. In China, after the CRISPR baby scandal of 2018, gene editing in humans was banned. The US and EU reinforced bans. The World Health Organization in 2021 warned against creating a genetic caste system. But markets move faster than morals. By the time regulations catch up, the tech is already normalized. So here we are. You're not a mother, you're a developer of humans. When the womb is replaced by a capsule, it's not just biology that disappears. It's the warmth of the body. The line between birth and production collapses. Genome equals interface. Embryo equals asset. Parenthood equals contract. It's not boy or girl anymore. It's what version, and if you think it'll never happen, remember. In the 2000s, no one thought you could pay with your face in a supermarket. No one imagined AI diagnosing cancer better than doctors. No one believed deepfakes could clone your voice and face. No one expected chatbots to sound like humans. And yet, here we are. This is Motherhood 404. The womb isn't sacred anymore. It's optional. Children aren't miracles anymore. Their specs. Subscribe if you want to know where this road really leads. Because it's not just strange, it's terrifying. And if you want to see how fast we're colonizing space, go watch my previous episode. Like and follow so you don't get stuck in the past. Here's your future. I explain it in simple words. You're pixel blonde.